Hi everyone, my name is Shantae Lively and this is Bring a Folding Chair series. So BAFC is a talk series where guests come together to discuss diverse topics and the importance of bringing all seats to the table. Today's topic is why existing is resisting and our special guest is Kayla Trice. Hi. So I hope you brought your folding chair, Kayla. Let's get started. So our question is why existing is resisting. And I think that's a little heavy question with a lot of variability in its meanings. So what do you think it means when people say their existence is resistant? Really what I think that means is because we live in a society that has been built up um, and around white supremacy and POC inferiority, um, there was a time and there still is a time um, that white supremacy has tried to erase black culture, um, has tried to and continues to steal away black culture and pass it off as trendy or fun. So the fact that we are still existing as ourselves, we are a force of resistance to that um, theft and to that cultural genocide. Yeah, like even just outside black culture, you can look at historically, mm -hmm. it just being alive and celebrating your culture with against all that, um, just against those naysayers, against those people trying to destroy it is a form of resistance. You could think of people, um, Jewish people after the Holocaust or any types of people who were oppressed during the Holocaust from the Nazis. You could think of our indigenous, indigenous people here in the United States who have still been working on making sure that their languages and cultures are passed down through generations. And that is a form of resistance because otherwise, if you don't do that, you will be forgotten or you will not have that culture passed down to those people, to your people through generations. So just some things I was thinking of. Um, so we gave those kind of few examples. What are some other ways that your existence can be resistant? Really, it's just showing up in a room. Um, let's see, for example, I attend Tuskegee University, uh, go Golden Tigers, to you, you know, um, and I'm studying sociology and I'm part of this program, it's called the Mellon Mays Undergraduate Fellowship, and part of this, well, the, the goal of this program is to get uh, minority youth into academia because academia is such a uh, place that is just surrounded by whiteness. And we're trying to break those barriers. So simply by us just showing up and saying, having we have a different perspective because we've lived a different life. So just showing up in those rooms and being that uh, person to bring Black issues to the table or to bring um, Jewish issues to the table or Native issues to the table, because white people aren't thinking about that. There was a, um, a story that we had to read um, before going into this program of this like true a true event when um they were you know creating voice technology or whatever mm -hmm. um and the people who were creating they were like yeah this voice technology is great and so they're creating this technology or whatever and it wouldn't listen to women like it wouldn't pick up women's voices because oh, wow. there was literally not a woman at the table to give her voice so that the technology could pick it up. So just being there is like bringing up, just existing in that space is resisting to the mainstream oppression that's going on. Yeah, so a lot. Um, <laughs> I actually, during the summer, some of the things I was noticing, at least in my like STEM experience, STEM fields was um, a lot of different um, organizations and groups were doing like black in STEM week. So it could mm -hmm. be black birders or black um, naturalists. And I'm marine biology, marine biologist. So when we did black and marine science week, I was just like, wow, because it's a thing of just in at my university, I was one of a few in my field. And that just made me one more um, 
more pro bleh, more wanting to bring more people with me because you need those diverse perspectives when you're talking about a field that is about the world, about a diverse world, different locations. You can't just show up into a place and be like, tell me about your thing. I know all this information about your place, but you don't know the information that has been passed down through generations, that information that is from those people who have lived there and not the scientists or people who just came and say, I looked through a microscope and found mm -hmm. this, but they don't know what the people know. Um, but back in Black and Marine Science Week, it was a way of just showing different people who from different universities, different um, organizations, different colleges, just saying that we exist, we are here. You might not see many of us at your specific place, but around the world, around the country, we exist. And it was really amazing for me because I got to see and meet tons of people who are like me. And though I was just a university undergraduate student, um, and so some of the things they were talking about didn't apply to me yet, it was good to know that I was not alone in whatever I heard. I do exist, and by existing, we are resisting hot. <laughs> And so I really enjoy that because it's a thing of, you know, diversity, having representation, and that's important when you're talking about resistance. If you, the simple thing of being represented in a field can show and bring more people with you, and it makes a lot of people mad. You could just think about our inauguration, which was on Wednesday, how we now have our first Black, Southeast Asian, woman of color as our vice president. And no matter how we feel about her and her background, that's something that is a resistance by being in that space. It won't be the first one anymore. I'm so tired of hearing when people are like, you know, this is the first. Mm -hmm. to I'm like, it's been how many years? U.S. is what, 200 something years old and we're still on the first? That's always what gets me. So just interesting. When we yeah. Also, hadn't you traveled to South Africa? Didn't you? Yes. Okay. And there's a lot about that's the, the point of that trip basically was, you know, existence is resistance. And one of the, the days I actually ended up like breaking down crying on that day because we went out, um, we were in this like hotel, first of all, mm -hmm. this hotel on this beach and it was so beautiful. And you know, the beach and the sand and we were like, woo, and, but we had to take classes. So we were in the hotel <laughs> taking classes. Um, and this one day we were having, we were gonna have a field trip. So I went to Cape Town, um, flew into Cape Town and we were gonna go like into the city of Cape Town. This was like on the beach, um, on the Cape, Cape Town. Huh. So um, the theme of that day was whose Cape Town is it? Mm -hmm. And you know, you think you know about apartheid as much as, you know, as much as we learn in the United yes. States about apartheid, but you think you know about it. And then I went to South Africa and we learned about this theme of whose Cape Town is it? And we just learned about all these different places and uh, we walked around and we were like uh, being taught, you know, this place used to belong to um, Black people and then apartheid happened and they got kicked off of this this land. And we went to this um, place, I don't remember the name of it, but it was supposed to be a museum because this coffee house, they were like, we're gonna build a coffee house here. And they started digging up, they found bones. And they were like, wait wow. a minute. So they found the bones. And instead of, you know, leaving the bones in the ground as a grave, because I, they, they found out that this was a, a burial site for mostly black people, um, mm. black Indian and colored people, um, in South Africa, they were like, let's dig up the bones, put them in boxes, and then make a museum. But they, they that's what they did. They dug up the bones Ugh. and put them in boxes and put them in, like, behind this, like, shelf thing. Um, but that's, like, one room. The rest of the place is a coffee house. And that's when I started crying, because I was like, you have desecrated these people's graves. You don't even know who you put in the box if you put them with other people, because you want to sell tourist coffee. Yeah. 
And so by telling us, you know, a lot of us are from America, some of us were from South Africa, um, telling us that this existed. I mean, this exists. Um, and just portraying the, the history that was along with that and uh, the history of apartheid to us and the people who went to apartheid, apartheid ended in 1994. Like, wow. I wasn't even born. But it wasn't that long ago. It was not long ago. And so the people who lived through it, they're like, we're here as a example, as a testament to what happened to us. And we're fighting back against it. So that just that stuff, it, it, it was really powerful. Like I could not stand to see those people in those boxes because it made me think, I don't know who they are. And I don't know where I come from originally in Africa. These could be my relatives and nobody cares. They just put a coffee house on top of it. They just put a coffee house on top of them. So that really, it really brought me to tears. And then I saw two white people drinking coffee outside the coffee house. They had, they had nothing to do with this, but I was like, this is just boiling my blood. <laughs> but yeah, it was a, it was an interesting time, especially that day. It was really, really powerful. Oh, wow. Jess, do you think by being a form, just by existing in your space, by having that museum on, not the coffee shop part, but actually the museum, <laughs> having that in that location, do you think that is a form of like protest, a form of historical context for the people in the future, way more than when those people in 1994 have passed away and moved on? Um, do you think it's a form of protest by existing, by that space existing? I think it is because um, if I remember correctly, um, there was, before the coffee house was built and museum was built, there was, you know, like protests around, we shouldn't build anything on top of this. We should leave them um, as they are and like put a plaque up or something. Um, of course that lost. And the compromise was to have this one room as the museum and the rest of the building as the coffee house. So I do think at, at some level it was for the owners of the coffee house to save face um, don't know how much face they saved with that, but, uh, I do think that even winning that, that small victory of not even, not completely desecrating the grave of those people, um, that it is a form of resistance, that it's just to say, like, you drink your, you're drinking your coffee next to where these people were, uh, pillaged and beaten and, and died, um, and you need to be able to see that, so I do think it is a form of resistance. What? I know we are both, you know, resisting by just existing, resisting by putting together this talk series and you coming on and talking about it. But what are some other ways people can, you know, little ways that we can all resist without like, not everybody is a person to go out and protest. Not everybody is somebody who can go on social media like you and provide some facts, some well-needed facts and information on things that affect you. What's some little things we can kind of do in our resisting and existing? The biggest thing is to inform yourself. Facts, check your sources, and inform yourself of these things. I, um, as you know, I'm, I'm a very competitive person. And I often compete with myself. Um, no one wins, but um, <laughs> the way I do this is I have my own kinds of forms of protest in my head. Um, if someone says, and they don't even have to know me, like someone on the TV could be like, oh, you know, um, girls shouldn't do X. So in my mind, I'm like, that sounds like a challenge. <laughs> so I go and look up whatever X is and see if there's a way that I could have possibly done it in the past or could possibly do it in the future. Not that I, and it might not be a big thing. It might just be like, girl shouldn't take out the trash. I'll be like, okay, and I'll go out downstairs and, and take out the trash. trash. Be like, I did it, TV <laughs> man. Um, but things like that, like just inform yourself. And that is a form of protest. If you live in a, a household that believes in white supremacy and you're like, mm, I don't know about that. And you want to look up some stuff that's protest that is that's a that's a huge protest when I was um when I was in South Africa my roommate Lizanne I love her um she was telling me about her life story 
And one of the last things that she said at the end of this life story that she was telling mm -hmm. me was that um, resistance doesn't always happen in the streets. It happens in the bedroom and it happens in the kitchen. Ooh. And I was like, wow, wow. So your <laughs> resistance doesn't have to happen on the re the revolution does not have to be televised. Okay. I you can <laughs> You can Google and you can just look up and inform yourself of these things. That's the first step in resisting to something. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. I Especially after this crazy 2020 summer and 2020 year we had, I've seen so many of people I know, friends on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, informing themselves and helping to inform others about issues that maybe they weren't well informed about beforehand. Um, but they're trying to say, I'm getting better. Here's some resources I found. Here's some voices I listen to that are not who I am, let's say. If it is a white person who is like, I don't know this, it doesn't directly affect me, but here's some voices I learned from, here's some voices I heard, and I wanna spread that information to you. And that always, that just gets me. I'm just like, I'm so proud of you. You're, we're all working to be better people in however different ways we can. And I just, throughout this time, I've been finding so many different like Instagrams and things to follow. Like I love I, Black and Marine Science Week. They have their own web series and um, Instagram now. I just found uh, this like podcast YouTube series from Black journalists and it's called Everything I Can't Say. And they're talking about their experiences as being journalists in this field. And that's just a little group I didn't think about actually when you are like, okay, you know, they're just journalists, but there are spaces that they exist in that don't exactly treat them the best or they see things differently than maybe how what we seeing them on the television see or they feel things that we're just like oh that's just the news but they're out there doing doing them um so i kind of got all my things out what do you got any more stuff on existence and resistance just one thing that, you know, I learned in high school. Challenge everything. If you think you know something, do you really? Oof. So, you know, look up, look it up. Um, learn more information on it. There's always ways to improve our knowledge base. Um, and the other thing is, if someone tells you that something is happening to them, maybe you should listen just a little bit. Like, you know, you could go look it up. But be open-minded because, like, this summer, like you said, our crazy 2020 summer, crazy 2020 year, yeah. uh, we are marching in the streets. And so many, which I'm glad for, so many white people are have woken up and said, oh, this is a problem. And it's like, yes, but this has been a problem. And we have been saying this. And you're just now listening. I don't know what clicked for them to just now listen. Um, but if yeah. we, we're saying something's a problem, it's a problem. Uh, look it up look up some other voices don't just you know say oh no that's not a real thing like yeah it is so also people shouldn't just because maybe you're friends with somebody in that minority group or whatever you shouldn't really just go up to them and ask yeah. them these questions if they want to talk to you about it sure but there's most likely a voice out there that is answering these questions is out there and providing this information so you don't need to go down to Michael down the street and ask him about how he's feeling about this. If you and Michael aren't that close, <laughs> you can go and get this information online from somebody, go and listen from other people and make your own opinions too. Like don't just be out there saying, oh, this is what this person said. We, nobody is a monolith. Mm -hmm. Everybody's existence is not one thing. They are all diverse human beings with different identities that they fit into different boxes some people don't even fit into these boxes that we all try to put us into but we should listen but listen to tons of different people like even from our conversation right now this is just me and you exactly <laughs> just our two experiences our two um thoughts on what existence and resistance mean to us but that doesn't mean we know all the answers 
we do not know everything that is under the sun. We don't even know all examples. There's so many ways um, of existence and resistance that people can follow or people can see historically. I always love looking to the past. I think I get that from my dad. I like history and how it interacts so much with our present and how we kind of always repeat mm -hmm. what's going on. And so we should all just be good listeners, <laughs> be good, diverse listeners and do resisting our forms of protest, our forms of just existing and however we see fit in different ways. Yeah. All right. I think that's all I have. So Kayla, I want to thank you so much for being my special guest and bringing your folding chair to my table. You were awesome. And I really do love that you gave this idea for us to do our first, woo first show of this series. It's good. And I think we had some good conversation with it. Me too. Um, so just so you guys know, forever who is watching, any major things that we talked about, such as um, the different weeks, Kayla's MFU, MMUF, <laughs> the South Africa Museum and slash Coffee House, um, I'll be putting those links in the YouTube Instagram description so that you can see this information for yourself. Make your own decisions, listen to those voices, not just ours. Um, BAFC, bring a folding chair has a lot more content that we'll be doing possibly throughout the month of February, as well as definitely in the future. So don't forget to follow us on Instagram at bring underscore a underscore folding underscore chair and on YouTube at bring a folding chair, no underscores there. If you have any suggestions of topics and or guest speakers, go to our suggestion box, which is in the link in our bio and thank you for watching. Peace.